hey there, welcome to Movie Review Mom. I'm the mom and I do the movie reviews. And my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision for you and your family as to whether or not you wanna spend time or money or both watching a specific film. So the specific film I'm reviewing today is called The School for Good and Evil. This action fantasy movie is now available exclusively on Netflix. It's rated PG-13 and is two hours and 27 minutes long. That's pretty long. So I'm going to give you my movie review mom grade for this film and brace yourself. You may not like it. It's a now, I always feel bad because that sounds like a bad grade, right? In school, I would never want to get a C plus. But my husband always reminds me a C means it's average. There's nothing super average about this movie. But OK, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me explain. So keep watching. I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell. And then I'll point out things I liked and didn't like and why. And uh, offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about, and even recommendations for films that are sort of similar that you might also like. All right, so in a nutshell, in the village of Gavaldon, two misfits and best friends Sophie, played beautifully by Sophia and Caruso, and Agatha, played beautifully by Sophia Wiley. Lots of Sophies going on in here. They share the unlikeliest of bonds. Sophia, golden-haired seamstress, dreams of escaping her dreary life to become a princess, while Agatha, with her grim aesthetic and offbeat mother, has the makings of a real witch. One night, under a blood-red moon, a powerful force sweeps them away to the school of good and evil, where the two stories behind every great fairy tale begin. Yet something is amiss from the start. Sophie is dropped into the school of evil, run by the glamorous and acid-tongued Lady Lesso, played by the gorgeous Charlize Theron. And Agatha is dropped off in the school for good, overseen by the sunny and kind Professor Dovey, played by Kerry Washington. Now, as if navigating classes with the offspring of the Wicked Witch, Captain Hook, and King Arthur wasn't hard enough, according to the schoolmaster, who's played by Lawrence Fishburne, by the way, only true love's kiss can change the rules and send the girls to their rightful schools and destiny. But when a dark and dangerous figure, played by Kit Young, with mysterious ties to Sophie, reemerges and threatens to destroy the school and the world beyond entirely, the only way to a happy ending is to survive their real life fairy tale first. Whew, okay, that was a handful. And that's kind of <laughs> one of my complaints. There's a lot going on with characters appearing and disappearing and then reappearing, uh, not literally by magic, but in the storyline itself. Okay, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll share some of the things that I didn't like here in a minute. Uh, the Magical Mayhem was directed by Paul Feig or Feig. I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Anyway, he also wrote the screenplay based on the book by Soman Chinani. Hopefully I pronounced that name correctly. Soman has a cameo performance in the movie as one of the teachers in the School of Evil. If I were ever gonna direct a movie, I would definitely put myself in there in a small role or you know, just as a background character for fun. I love it when directors do that. So here's the list of things that I really liked about the movie. First of all, I absolutely adore Kate Blanchett. I wish we could have seen her in this, but it's still great to hear her voice as the narrator or the historian. Rachel Bloom is hilarious and so talented, and it was really fun to see her as Honora. And I'd love to see her in even more movies. She was perfect in the TV show, My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. And so I'm super excited to see her in a feature film, but I'd love to see her role expanded because I think she's that talented. The two leading ladies are Sophia and Caruso and Sophia Wiley, who I just mentioned, and matched by Charlize Theron and Kerry Washington. Lots of great female leads in this movie. Lawrence Fishburne always makes a movie better just by being in it. 
The costume design is a lot of fun. You can now see some of the beautiful costumes on display in a pop-up store in the Grove in Los Angeles, California. So that's super fun. Most movies like this show one-dimensional characters that are either good or bad. So I actually really appreciate the story and how it shows us characters that are a little bit of both and that that line can be, be very blurred. So now on to the things that I didn't like so much. First of all, the movie is way too long. It feels like it would be better as a TV series or a limited movie series. So we could really get to understand this school, the characters, their motivations, uh, their relationships and all of that. There are so many side characters that we really don't get to know much about them, making the entire movie just feel overstuffed and crammed so full of information that we're starting to lose focus on which characters we really need to pay the most attention to. Now, despite all of the action and drama, I actually felt bored at times, which is weird because there was plenty to look at in this movie. I was surprised by some of the bad acting moments from award-winning stars who I know can do so much better, almost as if they were just sort of calling it in. I don't know. I would just, again, I was just surprised. Now, that also seems to be happening more and more in these Netflix movies. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Netflix. They've done some great things, but I'm seeing a lot of big name stars in not that great of movies, which is so disappointing. And it makes it almost feel like it's a cash grab for the studios and even the actors themselves. Because if it were a blockbuster feature film coming out of Hollywood, it would have been just amazing, right? I don't know. So let me give you some tips for parents. There is a lot of magical violence and destruction, hatred, fighting. There are some scary images that might frighten young children and people die. So some of the themes that are illustrated very well are friendship, trust, power, betrayal, and good and evil, of course. So I always write down funny lines and interesting lines just so you can kind of get a taste for the movie. And I won't share them all, but I'll share a few of them. You can see the rest of them at my website, moviereviewmom.com. So one of the funny lines was um, a conversation between Hort, who's played by Earl Cave, and a princess. And so Hort says, can I touch your hair? Most witches don't have princess hair. I bet it smells like cake. I love cake. <laughs> and then an interesting line is spoken by Agatha, who's played by Sophia Wiley. And she says, I don't believe that anyone is truly good or evil because people are complicated. And I think that was one of the big messages of the movie is we all have a little bit of both in us. And we reveal the part of us that we choose to. So uh, another interesting line is by Carrie Washington, and she's the dean of the good princesses, I guess we could say, the school for good, and she's the leader. Anyway, she says, one doesn't measure one's goodness just by how one looks, and these girls are beautiful with lovely gowns and all of that. She says, it's about what one does, and I loved that line too. And then another line that she says later on is, magic follows emotion. The stronger the emotion, the more powerful the magic. Summon enough passion and you can accomplish anything. So there's some kind of deep concepts in this story. And then finally, I'll finish with uh, a line by Lawrence Fishburne. He's kind of like the head honcho of both schools. And he says, the world of story needs great heroes and villains to teach the people of the outside world to make choices, to find their way. And I love the whole idea of choices and consequences as well in this story and how we really do need to have opposition in all things so that we can intentionally make a decision. And then of course, we will receive the consequences, the natural consequences of that choice. All right. So as I was watching this movie, one film that immediately came to my mind is Artemis Fowl, where there are choices and consequences as part of the theme and also magical, fantastical creatures and the whole setting and environment. So I think you might enjoy that one as well. 
All right. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. That really helps my channel to grow. And I appreciate all of your comments. It also helps my channel to grow. Be sure and like, and uh, I, I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.